All right, welcome back to another episode of my Building Detailed Models in Blender. In the last episode, we built the canopy. And this one, I'm going to talk about cutting out the control surfaces on the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer. So I'm going to begin by duplicating that, moving it to the scene collection, just getting it out of our shrinks. And I'm going to turn off our canopy collection. And if I go in the top view, I want to create a plane because we're going to create some cutting tools. Our X90, just turn it up on its edge. And our rudder, I want to, or elevator, I want to turn off the subdivisions there in the modifiers because they're going to get in the way. Uh, when you cut through a subdivision, it doesn't work very well. So I'm just going to move this to right there. And just move it just to follow the line. And we're just going to trace one of these lines here out. I'm going to take this face. I'm going to duplicate it because I want a parallel line because there's a gap between these surfaces. I hit GG to pull this back to here. E, Y to constrain. E, X to constrain. E, Y to constrain. And I'm just going to bring that, since I'm in active element, I can hit S, Y, and it's going to bring it up to there. And this is going to be our cutting tool. It's going to cut our elevator off from the stabilizer. And I want to put one more tool on here. I'm going to take this one, Let's take this face rather, Twist it around. Take this face. And we're going to put it right there. That's a seam also, so we're going to cut that also. So the, the overall game plan here is to take this cutting tool, like a cookie cutter, and we're going to use it to slice the elevator and horizontal stabilizer into parts for each of the panels, right? So this one has three units. It's got the elevator itself and then the stabilizer has two panels. So we select our our object and we go into edit mode, select everything, control left click our cutter, and if we hit F3 and type knife project, you can take cut that and make sure you cut through, so make sure that's checked. And if we hide our cutter, you can see that we've created those cuts for the various pieces. So now we just need to separate things. Uh, we need to Go into X-ray mode, and I want to take these pieces for this outer panel. I'm going to select them. I'm going to separate this. All right, so that's going to become its own part. And I didn't actually take top and bottom. I guess I'm not really in X-ray mode. Good thing I checked. All right, let's see how that looks. All right, so that is the outer corner panel. So I'm going to hit P, separate that, hide that, go back up here. I don't want these pieces here because this is a gap between the control surfaces. All right, so that goes away. Delete those faces, and looks like we got an extra vertex there. We can get rid of that. And back in the top, and now we're going to separate the elevator and the stabilizer. And hopefully that's all of that. All right, so I hit P and separate that. And we're just going to work on these one at a time. This guy, I'm just going to, I'm going to move it over to, I have a collection called Panel Shrinks, which is where I kind of put these cutters and tools. So I'm just going to move that there to get it out of our way. That is old junk from a test. Get rid of that. Okay, let's work on this one first. Probably the easiest of them. Uh, for for control surfaces, uh, I'm actually going to make a solid piece. When we actually go to do the wing uh, and the fuselage, we're going to make panels. But for these, I'm, these are going to have they're just going to be solid. It, it doesn't make sense to make individual panels for this. So I can kind of make this whole thing a solid chunk because we need it's so thin. So we have extra vertex here. Get rid of that. Or better yet. Collapse it. Get a chunk here. That's better. And I don't have screencast keys on again. I was just hitting the F key to fill those in. FF. Alright. We want to clean up some of this geometry here. 
So we can move these to merge these at the center and do that here, here, and then we can move this to the edge at last. All right. And we got a couple triangles here we want to get rid of. So I can take the knife tool, go from here to here, clean that up. Just trying to create quads here and do the same thing here. I'm going to take this here to here, wrong one, and just bend it a little bit. Seems to work a little better. All right, and then I want to select my edges here. I'm going to do a couple, a couple things at once here, as long as we're in here. Selecting all my edges, I want to go to item and set the bevel to one, because right, we're going to have a sharp edge there. And I also want to make it a seam for UV unwrapping. Figure as long as I've got this selected, I might as well mark them. I'm going to mark that as a seam too. All right, so that's our corner piece. Now if we go to our modifiers, I can add a bevel to this. This will be the first one in the stack. Make it a millimeter, two segments by weight so that it only uses the bevel weight. And then when we put the subdivision on it, it makes it nice and shiny and crisp with nice sharp edges. All right, so that is our corner piece. All right, let's take a look at the leading edge here. And we're going to do something similar. Uh, first thing to do is, I think if we look at our reference material, that edge actually is square. Right? So this edge here is square. So I want to get rid of that. And I want it to be square with that. So I'm going to hit SY to square it up. And then I don't need those. I'm just going to get rid of any leftover vertices we have from our cutting. And we're going to do the same thing. Alright, now the back of the elevator, or the back of the horizontal stabilizer, is recessed in, right, there's a plate on top and bottom, so we need to make that recess. So I can do two loop cuts. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to hit GG just to bring it up. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Push it down, and we're going to take these faces, and I'm going to extrude them in, just straight ahead forward, and get rid of these faces on the ends, so we don't need them. And then I can add a loop cut here, and one here, and then we can just tidy this up, merge it last, merge it last, Oops. fill that one. This is going to be inside the fuselage, so we actually don't need these faces. I'm going to move this back. And at last. And these faces here, actually I didn't need to do that, are all inside the, uh, inside the fuselage, so, oh wait, that's the outside. Yeah, those we actually need. Take that back. This one we need. Merge them in the middle. So I get the quads along the edge there. And then these faces, which is what I thought I was talking about, can go. Because we will not see them. They will be tucked away inside the uh, runner. All right, so let's look at this piece again by itself. And now we want to add our uh, bevel weights and our seams. So just clicking everywhere I want it to be sharp, which just happens to coincide with, generally with uh, where you want uh, seams for uh, UV unwrapping. All right, so those are all sharp pieces there. One, control E to mark the seam, and then I want one along the front just to make unwrapping a little easier. Just mark that as a seam. That's not going to be marked as a bevel. And then I can take this guy, this guy, control L, and I'm going to copy the modifiers just to copy over that bevel that we had. There we go. It's starting to look good. All right, now let's take a look at the actual elevator itself. It's a little more complicated because it has, uh, has a bevel to it in the front. So first things first, clean up some of the junk we had left over from our cut. Gotta work our way around here, looking for stray vertices. All right, let's 
take this. I move. I want to do this. I want to add. Actually, I want to add one here. Like that. I'm going to move this to there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Just tie them in. All right, and I'm going to add. We want a. Um, kind of want this to be parallel to that edge. I'm going to move it this way and hit E on the key. You can see a little red dot tell me which line I'm getting parallel to. And I'm going to add a knife cut here in the middle because I want, I want a controlling edge there. Just double check that I did cut all the way through. And then these I'm going to move to be perpendicular to the edge. It seems to make edges work a little better. Um, let's see how I want to do this one. Merge at the center. Merge at last. We'll merge at the center. And then we'll just drag this there. And we'll do the same thing on the bottom. Just clean up this edge to make sure that it's uh, make sure it's clean. So that's looking pretty good. And with any luck, we can start filling our edges. I didn't miss any, hopefully. Yep, messed something up. What do we got here? Oh, yeah, I was missing two. I had two on top of each other. That's better. And this one we do need to go all the way down, but we have to do a little bit more work. If we look at the diagram, there's a curve here and there's a cut there. So make the cut first. Let me go from here, hit C key to make sure I cut all the way through. Take it off there. And we can get rid of those. And take it from here. Again, the C key to cut all the way through. Get rid of these. And then I need to cut this curve here. And I'm just going to use the knife tool again, going from here, hit the C key, and I'll do one, two, three points there. And we can get rid of this. All right. So I can do fill here. And one more fill. Okay. Let's take a look what we have. Got some triangle stuff going on there, so we need to clean up this edge and create a retaining loop that goes along here. So we go into wireframe, and I can go K, and I'm going to start here, and I'm going to put a, hit the C key so I cut all the way through, and I'm going to put a knife cut point for every vertex. Put one here, and then one there. All right, and that'll give us a nice parallel edge around the corner here, which is what we need. Otherwise, we get some weird we were shading. We'll fix the thing I just touched there in a second. It's going to take a little extra cleanup. And just to make the corners happy, I'm going to adjust them to be kind of on the normal. So I'm just hitting GG to slide them. We don't want this. And we don't want this. Alright. We don't need that anymore. And we can probably just make that triangles to make Blender happy. Not triangles, rather quads. I suppose an end gone. All right, so let's see what happens when we hit subdivide here. How does it look? All right, it's getting there. This obviously needs to be sharp in here. It's looking at this piece right here. So we need to add in our bevels. That'll keep that sharp. If I make that a bevel, this is actually rounded. And this is rounded out because it's actually sticks in, into that surface. So I'm going to take this there. And I'm going to just hit GY and maybe just to help it out a little bit, I'm going to hit B. I can move it further out. I just have one one bevel on it. See how that looks with a subdivision. 
put everything back. And I'm going to copy again the modifiers from one of these things. You can see how that right away tightened up this piece here. If we hide this, you see that our hinge probably is too big and sticks in too far. So maybe there should be a gap there. So, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to back up and get rid of that bevel. But I am going to put on that modifier. Hide those. I'm going to try this a different way. Instead of putting a bevel on it, I'm just going to pull it forward. And then I'm going to take the top and bottom and just scale them down a little bit just to try to get it to tuck in a little better. We can look at it from here. It just fits inside. I don't care that it goes past that. No one's going to see that. Um, as long as we get that idea that it's rolling in underneath. That's what I want. All right. So probably add a little bit of crispness on the inside here. Um, if we add another loop cut. That was ugly. So I don't want to do that. What I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to sharpen this edge up a little bit on the inside. I think it's a little bit sharper than that. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take this guy, let's isolate it, and delete that. And I'm going to put two in. I'm going to just GG. I'm going to hit E. I'm going to push that up there. I'm going to hit GG. E, F to switch directions so that it comes down to the bottom there. And then one here. I'm going to merge them at the center so they don't have too much of an end on there. I got a little triangle in the back. And then over here, turn off my subs. I'll just cut some parallel faces here. Add the edges we need. With any luck, that'll that'll tighten it up a little bit, make it a little sharper. All right, so let's take a look at everything together. Turn on the mirror, turn on the mirror, and turn on Matcap. Turn on Matcap, he said. One more time. There we go. All right, so we have nice smooth surfaces. Maybe just rolling that uh, Matcap over, we can see that the reflections are are smooth, we don't have any dimples. Let's see, on subdivisions we got two. two. So I want to make sure they're not too high. Um, some, sometimes accidentally I'll put like a three or four on it, it's, it's unnecessary. All right, so let's turn back on our model, or our shrinks rather. And actually turn that off for a second, hide this. Turn on our shrinks. And this guy is our elevator shrink. We're done with looking at that for now. So we can put that back. Unhide that. Go back to studio. I'm going to turn back on my canopy for a moment. I'm going to select these guys. I'm going to select my canopy and I'm just going to copy, link the materials. And I just link the materials so I have an idea. I just, as I go along, as the project you know, becomes more complex, it's easy to look at a part and say, okay, yeah, I'm everything that's yellow has been at least cut. And then you know, as it goes on, we might change it to a color for things that have been UV unwrapped or something. So it's just a, an easy identifier for me to figure out what's what. All right, so that is cutting out the control surfaces uh, for the elevators. Um, I will probably go ahead and do the rudder offline because it's exactly the same process. You don't need to see me do it twice. Uh, in a future video, I'm probably going to show next maybe some cutting some of the panel lines in the fuselage just as a demonstration. Um, again, I have a video, separate video on, on making individual panels on aircraft, and it's probably not a bad, bad idea to watch that because uh, it does go into a lot of detail. But I think I'll do at least one fuselage panel for this series. And uh, if you need more information, you can watch that video. All right, see you in the next one.